what is this clean air and economic justice plan that we speak of today? So some of the core components are expanding the peak hour fleet by 500 buses. So those are the hours that are busiest from seven to nine and four to six throughout the day. So this will actually require the purchase of 600 compressed natural gas buses. And what it will, what it will yield is an 18% increase across the board um, in bus service. So what does this look like on the ground? It means minimized wait times. It means a reduction in overcrowding and smoother regional connections. Second demand, we are asking for an expansion in night, weekend, and rapid service, including, um, but not limited to, the creation of five new freeway express lines, 10 new metro rapid lines, and five local lines on new or existing routes. Third, the investment of $150 million for bus-only lanes, creating 10 bus-only lanes on major streets and freeways, which we see as a first phase uh, for regional connections. And um, when we think about um, getting people out of their cars, we, we know that the expansion of highways won't attract people out of their cars. That will attract more people to the, to the highway system. Um, we know that the bus has to be faster. When you think about um, what we could actually accomplish, right, in terms of air quality and um, global warming, you can, one single bus can replace 40 to single passenger automobiles. So, um, rapid lines carry 22% of MTA's daily boardings, and a third of those are new riders or previous car drivers. So now imagine the possibilities um, in the region if we had an extensive network that connected all of these corridors. Lastly, we call for the reversal of the 2007 fare increase for all MTA fares. And like Francisca had mentioned, um, if we actually want to stimulate people's household economies, we can do that by keeping money in people's pockets. So in 2007, just one year after the federal courts decided to not um, extend the consent decree, the MTA moved forward with a set of draconian fare increases. So what does this mean? This means that people are forced to make very tough choices every single day. You don't have to walk very far to meet someone who is a bus rider that will tell you, yeah, I either have to buy my son a student bus pass or I save that money to ensure that he has cereal and milk in the morning before he goes to school. And unemployment in the region um, has hit an all-time high of 12.2% 12, 12 um, in the county. And according to some statistics, LA City stands at 14%. And as MTA pre prepares itself to receive new revenues from Measure R, the next in this 30-year plan, um, the Long Range Transportation Plan, that includes in it about 14 fare increases for the next 30 years. And we believe, um, so some of the, I mean, what, what does this actually look like for, for people? For a family of four bus riders, you will save Reversing the 2007 fare increase will save people $336 a year. A family actually looking to ride public transit and, and leave their car can actually experience a saving of over $8,000. So the reversal of the, of the fare increase is not just something that will provide economic relief for low-income families, but like Ryan was saying, it actually has proven to increase ridership. Okay. So what will these 500 buses get us? What will the reversal of the fare increase look like? Investing in the bus system will stimulate the economy. We know this will generate over $4 billion in economic activity and 7,700 jobs in Southern California alone. Fare reductions generate $300 million in economic stimulus for the city and the county. It will create 1,500 unionized green jobs for bus drivers, mechanics, maintenance, and other M MTA employees. The creation of 2,330 union construction jobs because those 500 buses will need to be housed somewhere. So we'll need to build two new bus depots and um, the, the bus only lanes also require some construction. And it will create 4,250 US-based jobs related to the manufacture and sale of the buses. 
But let's look at the environmental and public health benefits. To actually expand public transit will result in reduced auto use, less, art, less air pollution, and the improvement of people's, of people's health. Given that we live in the most auto-dominated region in the, in the country, we know that, we believe that we have a moral responsibility and the environmental necessity to reduce auto use by creating an actual alternative. Studies link LA's lethal air to cancer and birth complications. Not to mention it can cause asthma and other respiratory diseases. But let's be clear, LA's air quality is not only a health hazard, but an economic risk to further push those living on the edge right over it. So how do we expect to pay for this plan? The expenses, it's about $357 million um, in capital cost, about $1.14 billion in um, increased operation expenses, 178 in fare reductions, and the construction of these bus depots will be about $330 million for a price tag of $2.12 billion. Now, where do we think this money is going to come from? It's very important. There is 20% in the Measure R sales tax that has now been protected um, to be used to maintain the system and to expand the system. But that's $7 billion over 30 years, and this is a seven-year plan um, for $908 million. The federal stimulus package, within, which then creates um, the flexibility for MTA, they received, um, were said to receive close to a billion dollars. And this creates the flexibility for them to shift other pots of money because, remember, we weren't expecting to get this money in the region. And the Federal um, Transportation Act, about $400 million um, through applying for different programs. And lastly, the State Transit Assistance Program, about $600 million. And where are we now? Barbara um, took us through, through some of those steps. The, this 30-year long-range transit plan contains, contains no plan for bus except expansion or, or real improvements. It calls for recovering one-third of the cost to operate the system from fares by 2015 through cuts and increases. It has a strong highway and rail emphasis with little money to then operate a lot of the projects that they will um, cut the ribbons on in the next few years. <coughs> but what was important is that Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas introduced an amendment to this 30-year plan that then protected the entire 20% for expansion of the bus system. A few years ago, the state of California took um, transit operation funds to close a deficit in the general fund. The court has since ordered the state of California, um, has ordered the state of California to reinstate the $1.2 billion um, back into the transit agencies across the state. And lastly, given the two, the true breakthroughs at MTA last month, we know that our, our plan can actually be a strong component of the bus system improvement plan that is required by state law um, through Measure R. So what can you do? Um, what we are asking folks to do is um, one thing that you can do is endorse the BRU's Clean Air and Economic Justice Plan. You can write a letter to key elected officials at the local, state, and federal level. If you're ready, you can talk to us about speaking at the December 10th MTA board meeting where we're hoping to actually do a presentation of our plan to the board. You can join Transit Riders for Public Transportation to help flip the script on the federal transportation bill and work with us to bring STA funds back to, into mass transit. Thank you.